Hey guys, today we're going to be messing around with these little NRF 24L01 modules here. Now these are uh, 2.4 GHz uh, wireless transceiver modules. And I have a couple of project ideas that I want to use uh, these things for. So I need to uh, start getting back into these things. I've used them before. Uh, but I haven't used any Arduino libraries since they've done all these updates to the IDE. So now I think there's like a library manager and all kinds of weird stuff like that that I have to mess with. <laughs> so I really have no idea how to do it anymore. And I don't have any libraries installed on my computer besides for the default ones right now because I haven't had the need to run any libraries since I built that computer last year in August of uh, 2015. But anyway, uh, gonna be messing around with these things. I gotta go get the library set and everything else. Uh, so I've actually got an entire drawer full here. I'm gonna get ten of them, actually. And, uh, we're just gonna take two of these. And if I remember correctly, these things require 3.3 volts. So we'll get out the drawer of Arduino stuff too. So we got a bunch of different Arduino stuff, as you might imagine in here. Uh, let's see what I got here. This is an Arduino Pro Mini. Uh, it would probably work, but I only have one of those, and I would kind of like to have a matching set. Um, I think these are the, the Nanos. Yeah, there we go. USB Nano V3 pack of three pieces. So I think that's what I'm going to end up using. Before I used the little Pro Mini boards with my uh, Arduino stuff like that. The problem with these is they don't have a 3.3 volt pin on them. Um, so you have to have your, uh, well, you can either run these things at 3.3 volts or you can uh, just, you know, get a voltage regulator and hook that up to uh, the little modules there. And the other thing I seem to remember about these is that they work better if you put a capacitor across the power pins. Um, this one's got a vent pin on it, actually. That's There we go. And before when I hooked these things up, I actually I just took this little pin header out because well, I didn't really have anything that would hook up to that nicely. Uh, but I took that out and I just soldered wires straight onto it. Worked well enough. I'll go ahead and get a couple of these uh, Arduino Nanos out and I try not to solder headers to them. Yep, yeah, I do. So there's two of those. I still got one spare so I can blow one of these up and still be able to do this project. <laughs> anyway, I've never messed with the, uh, I think I said this earlier, but I've never messed with the Arduino Nanos before either. So. This will be a learning experience for all of us, I suppose. And I think these have that, uh, whatever it is, a CHP340 chip or something like that on them. Uh, there we go. If you can see it. It's upside down. CH3400 actually, I think is what that says on it. Or no, CH340G, I think. Kind of hard for me to see it, but uh, anyway, there's a voltage regulator in the back of this thing. And I've blown up, I blew up one of those little mic, uh, Arduino Pro Minis once. I don't know if it was a defect in the board or whatever, but I hooked up 12 volts to the uh, raw pin. And it blew up the voltage regulator on it. You know, the chip and everything actually still worked, but... Uh, yeah, so this one actually has probably all the RX and TX lights on it, plus the power and the pin 13 LED. Uh, actually, it's a fairly nice board. I kind of like that uh, Pro Mini. I think you can get these on Amazon for $15 for five of them or something like that. It's not a bad price. Uh, not as cheap as the Pro Minis, though, because these have the uh, USB built onto them instead of having to have your own separate programmer. Uh, these also give you the... Uh, the six pin headers for doing uh, <clears throat> ISP programming. But I'm just going to solder these headers on there. I have no real use to use these things for anything. But uh, I'll solder these guys on and we'll start looking at the NRF24L01 library. So 
see what we can get here. All right, so I got the pin header stuck on here. Uh, probably not the prettiest job in the world, but it'll work. So uh, I didn't put these uh, six pin programming headers on there because I don't really need to use them. And if I actually put these inside some kind of a project box, those are just gonna end up sticking up and taking more height. All right, so I've managed to dig up a couple of 10 microfarad caps, as you can see there. Uh, these are uh, one of these is 10 microfarads at 6.3 volts, and the other one is 10 microfarads at 16 volts. So I got the capacitors added on there now. I'll look here at wiring everything together. Uh, I'm just going to use some of these female to female jumper wires. These are, I've got like 10 of them in one little pack here, 10 of them in a strip, kind of like ribbon cable. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna hook these things onto the Arduino first and then I'll hook them onto this. And I'm just going to use the exact same color coding that this diagram uses. And you'll see on these things, if you hold it this way so that the antenna is on the right, the pinout goes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it goes back and forth on that. So it's kind of weird. But that's how they've done it. So we we'll start out with connections on the Arduino. And they've used black for ground, which is sensible enough. And ground on this thing is somewhere. Looks like right here. All right, so ground's on there. Brown wire is what they've used for the 3.3 volt supply. Actually, you know what, I'd be better off putting the ground on this side, because there's multiple grounds on these. So ground there, and then 3.3 volts is right there. Green wire is hooked up to D12. Should be this guy right on this side of the Arduino. We have a yellow wire hooked up on D11. It's this one. We got a purple wire hooked up onto. Let's see, what is that? Purple wire on D10. And red wire on D9. And there should, I think, also be a blue wire over on D13 right there. So, blue wire. on D13, which is this pin right here. And then I've got three wires left over that aren't hooked up to anything on this uh, little set of cable, but anyway. On the other end, uh, pin one of this IC, we have a black wire. Pin two, we'll have a brown wire. Black wire being the ground, brown wire being the 3.3 volt VCC that these things require. Uh, let's see here, pin 3 is the red wire, which is D9 on the Arduino. Pin 4 is a purple wire, which is D10.
Uh, pin 5 is the blue wire, which is D13. And this thing, if you haven't noticed it yet, it uses a standard uh, SPI or SPI bus interface. So you can see uh, your master out slave in and master in slave out pins and that kind of stuff over here. And where that's marked at. But anyway, uh, pin number 6 is the yellow wire, which is going over to D11. my capacitor down oh well there we go and pin seven is a green wire which is going over to d12 and that should be it for the wiring of one of these things all right so as for installing the library here it's actually pretty simple you just go into sketch and then include library and then this manage libraries button and we'll go in here we'll look up nrf 24l01 and the second one down here is the one that I'm going to use and if you click on that there'll just be like a little install button over here that you can click on and it just uh, installs itself so uh, pretty easy to do uh, other than that I'll go ahead and open up the files that I'm going to upload to these Arduinos and we'll take a look at what they do alright so these are the transmit and receive codes now I found these online from somewhere uh, quite a while ago and the library has been updated a bit, so I've had to modify this code a little bit to get it to work, but uh, fortunately it is working now, and uh, well, you got some information there on how to hook these things up. And it's, it's all commented out in this thing. Uh, I went ahead and I added this in here. This is the setting the data rate, which I think I did on this side too. Uh, but that should increase the range there if you set the data rate to 250 uh, kilobits per second instead of the default 1 megabit per second. Uh, unless you need it to go fast, then you can actually set it to 1 or 2 megabits per second. Uh, but anyway, well, it defaults to 1 megabit per second without putting that line in there at all. Uh, but anyway, basically all this does is it... Uh, transmits, this code anyway, transmits uh, the values of analog pin 1 and analog pin 2. And you'll see it, it uh, it's for using like a joystick here. So we have joystick X and joystick Y is what they're telling or calling it there. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. So yeah, that's where it defines uh, A1 and A0. It's joystick X and Y. On the receiver side, uh, basically the same thing starting up here and if radioed out available it will read that off and it will just print the X and Y values of joystick 0 and joystick 1 and there's an else thing uh, with that well basically if there's no signal it'll just say no radio available and I added this part in here this and this, uh, this part up here and that basically gives you some idea of, uh, well, the percent of the time that the signal is available. It should give you some idea of the signal quality that you're getting. So I just thought that's somewhat useful. Uh, basically how that works is you have this uh, OK value here that goes up one for every time the uh, it passes and it gets a signal. And you also have uh, just a count that goes every single time the loop runs. Uh, so then after that you just divide uh, the number of times that it succeeded by the number of times the loop has run multiply it by a hundred that gives you percentage and then you're just uh, putting that out to the serial as well and then I put a quarter second delay in this all right so I'll go ahead and plug in one of these things we're going to uh, set this one up as a transmitter so let's see here, as long as we've got COM4 and then, oh, that's right, the Nano, and it's a ATmega328 on these boards that I have. So uh, let's see, we're going to make this one the transmitter, so we, we, we will want to. Yeah. So we'll want to upload that code. Give it a second here. And there we go, transmitter should be set up. 
and I'll grab the other Arduino board. Plug this one in, and we'll upload the receiver code to it. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug the transmitter into a power source. I've just got like a, a power bank here. I'm going to uh, just hook that up and then we'll open up the serial monitor. And we should get some information coming through here considering I set it to the right baud rate. There we go. Now one thing I will point out here. For whatever reason, it always misses the first uh, signal, basically. It always misses that first uh, packet of data. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why it does that, uh, but you'll see it's, uh, well, almost impossible to get the thing all the way back up to 100% because of that. Uh, but it will get up to like 99% or something. Uh, very high in the percentage, but uh, anyway... Now if I just go and touch the analog pins, it should actually change those numbers on the X and Y. You see that uh, kind of bounces up. Alright guys, uh, that's how you set these things up. Uh, it's fairly simple. I'll leave these, uh, well if I can, I'll leave these codes down in the description. Uh, I remember the last time I tried to put code in, in the uh, description, it wouldn't let me because it was too long. So I might end up having to to uh, delete some of the comments on the top of this and whatnot, but uh, that's basically just wiring information anyway, and I showed how to do that in the video. Uh, well, other than that, um, if you feel like it, you can subscribe to me, because I do have uh, a couple of projects uh, based around this that I want to show off, and one project that I'm still uh, trying to get parts for uh, that will eventually come out. But uh, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.